Welcome to all our ornamental fisheries viewers. Thanks for joining us for this another insightful video on breeding, rearing and caring for your ornamental fish. If you're new to our channel, please remember to click the subscribe button for instant notifications and more. Now today, this is the part two of the video, growing your own fish food ingredient. Now part one, we showed you how to harvest the Moringa leaves. Now in part two, we'll be showing you how we make the actual food and the other ingredient. Want to know more? Stay tuned. Welcome back to all our viewers. If you are new to our channel, please remember to click the subscribe button for instant notification and more and we would just like to say thanks to all those who continue to share and to like and to subscribe to our channel now we will be showing you today how we use the dried moringa leaves to make our fish food now i'll be putting about one and a half cups of moringa leaves in my blender to be blended out now this moringa leaf i've dried and allowed to dry properly and then i place it in my blender so that it would be powderized so therefore we would need all our fish food ingredient to be as soft as powdery as possible so therefore we will be blending out our moringa leaves until it is powdery now after blending for a minute or two now you see how powdery the moringa leaves look now it's extremely fine so what we will do now is that we will turn off our blender and we will place the blended leaves into a sieve and then we'll sieve out because there there's going to be some areas that are a little bit hard so we are removing all of the harsh areas the stems on the leaves that weren't removed so we'll sieve it to get out all those harder parts of the leaves now after we have finished blending our moringa leaves we are going to be adding the same amount of oats now this oat is one and a half cups of oat and we'll be blending this oat also we'll be ensuring that the oats is properly blended out and smooth as possible and powdery as possible because this would allow for the fish meal to be as palatable as possible for the fish and that the ingredients will be combined and will be easily combined together so therefore blending my oat for a minute or two i remove the oat into a separate basin so this is one and a half cups of oats now the other ingredient that i use in my fish food is multivitamin and vitamin c tablets now some individual use the the tablets um that have been expired some persons don't but i use my tablets that are fresh that are not expired as yet so therefore for this one and a half cup ingredient i used four multivitamin and two vitamin c so therefore if you're doubling up on your ingredient you can double up on your multivitamin and vitamin C depending on your vitamin it will take a little while 
to be greeted. Now, after greater in my vitamins, I'll be greater in also just two cloves of garlic. And this garlic is antibacterial. I always add a little garlic to my fish food. And this aids in the digestion process and also to ward off any internal parasite or internal infection. So I always add a small amount of garlic to my fish feed and this also helps if I'm experiencing issues, re disease or any bloating or anything like that. I usually use twice the amount of garlic in this portion of fish feed. Now the other ingredient that I'll be adding is sardines. Now as we all know sardines are rich in omega trees and fatty acids which are extremely rich in minerals and vitamins for fish. So therefore we'll be using just one serving, one tin of sardine and we get four small pieces of sardines in that can. Now what we want to do is to remove all the bones from the sardine. So we'll just open up the sardine and just remove all those bones from the sardine and ensure that there is no bone. After we have ensured that there is no bone in the salt in the sardine we are going to crush this sardine down to make it more easier to combine with the other ingredients. So we'll just use our fork and we'll just mash the sardine. Some persons will throw all their ingredient in the blender and re-blend it out but I tend to prepare all my ingredients separate and then try my best to combine them with and also using a, a, a small amount as possible of water. So there we have our moringa leaves blended properly so we'll add our vitamins and we'll combine that and make sure that it's combined properly. After we have added our vitamin C, we'll be adding our blended oat. Now our oat is blended right out. So therefore we'll be adding that one and a half cups of blended oats to our mixture. And we'll be combining and ensuring that all the ingredients are properly incorporated with each other. So we do all the dry ingredient first before we add any of the wet ingredient as the sardines or the garlic. So I'll be just leaving a small amount of oat because what the oat does is that I use the oat for as a binding agent. So the oath helps the fish meal and 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 it also aids in the binding process of the fish food so next i'll be adding my sardines my crushed sardines after removing and ensuring that all the bones have been removed and i use my fork to crush i'll be adding my sardines to my mixture now I'll be combining those as well um, and ensuring that I have even distribution right throughout. So I'll be adding my grated garlic as well, my fresh garlic. I always use fresh garlic and not the garlic powder. Some persons because of um convenience they may want to use the garlic powder but i use a fresh garlic therefore i then combined all the ingredients so i use my fork to combine 
all these ingredients quickly. Now, if you realize how all the ingredients are incorporated nicely, after the ingredients have been combined, I add a cup of water. Now, first I add a half a cup first, and then I just use my hand to knead that dough and to bring that, that dough together. So, therefore, I'll be using a cup of water but for your own level of consistency, you can add less or more. Now, don't always add all your water at once, but add your water in small amount of portions. And as you achieve the consistency that you would like your fish meal to be, then you would literally stop adding water. So, I've poured out a cup of water in mine already and I'm just combining and ensuring the consistency. The next thing I've realized with using the Moringa leaf is that it tends to absorb a lot of water. So therefore you have to be careful with your water whenever you're adding your water. So now that we have achieved the consistency that we are looking for, we continue to knead. And as you see, the dough has been completed. Now this is our fish meal. This is our finished fish meal. And this fish meal and this portion usually serves for a week. And I feed about 500 fishes out of this meal for a week now what i usually do if you look at this meal how you see how it's rich how it's looking green and rich full of fiber full of protein full of vitamins and minerals so therefore this food is power packed and will assist in the growth and the development of your fish so what i usually do is i usually cut up this meal into daily portions so usually i would get like eight portions out of it which i use one daily so after i'm finished i usually place them in a plastic bag and actually tie it tightly and then refrigerate because this would help the food to remain fresh so therefore when i take one out of the refrigerator i would feed off everything all of that for the day i would not place back that one in the fridge any more so therefore i get eight for the entire week and also an extra day. Now you can add or subtract any ingredient from what you have just seen based on your fishes. But my cichlids here, I'm showing you a demonstration as I made some smaller pebbles and I'll be just feeding my yellow labs and take a look at how they love this food now thanks much for joining us thanks much for being here with us we really appreciate your company and please remember to subscribe to our channel as we endeavor to make more videos to keep you informed ornament